what do we categorize as sick? Like, That's a great question. So what's obese, what's sick, what's... So at the, at the top level, we have to understand that over the last 40 years, a tsunami has come that we weren't aware was coming, that we weren't prepared for, and still haven't grappled with. And that tsunami is chronic disease and food-related illness. In 40 years? In 40 years. Did we have chronic disease prior to this? We did, of course we did, but not to the magnitude. We used to have like 5% obesity rates in this country in the early 60s. It's 40% now in most states. I thought it was like 30 like a nope, few years ago. Nope, nobody, nope. It's like 40%. Many states are 40%. And many are just pushing 40. So it's 35 to 40, depending on where you look at it. Like California is probably less, Colorado's right, right. less, but Mississippi and Alabama right, right. are, you know, four, 40 plus. So we, ha we have six out of every 10 Americans who's got a chronic illness, four to 10 who have more than one. By 10 years from now, we're going to have 83 million with three or more chronic diseases, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, cancer, dementia, you name it. We are uh, having 11 million people, and this is, I think, a conservative estimate, 11 million people around the world die every year from bad food, from ultra-processed food and not enough good food. Now, I think it's more like 50 million when you look at all the related mm -hmm. conditions and so forth. It's a staggering number that beats out smoking, mm. war, violence, accidents, you name it, nothing else comes close. Not malaria, TB, AIDS, all that is a fraction, a third of, of the deaths that are caused by chronic illness. And they're mostly preventable, and they're mostly caused by food, and they're mostly caused by the ultra-processed food that our food system produces en masse. It's the biggest industry on the planet. It's $15 trillion, about 17% of the world's global product, and it is controlled by a few dozen CEOs really? that are in monopolies around seed production, agrochemicals, fertilizer, processed food companies, it's, it's staggering how the system wow. has sort of just over the last 40 years completely transformed. And you know, I, you know, I remember like I was, I, was in this, I was in some store or <laughs> cafe and I saw this picture of Woodstock and I'm looking at the, all the sea of people. And in the there 60s, right? 69. There wasn't one overweight person. I watched this movie, I think it was called Amazing Grace about Aretha Franklin. African-American church. Now, African-Americans, 80% of African-American women are overweight. Uh, it is, you know, they're- 80% today? 80%. Why, why is that? Uh, well, because they're targeted by the food industry, because they're in a vicious cycle of, of economic stress, of social stress, of, of unfair targeting um, and manipulation by the food industry. This is well documented by, for example, studies from Yale, where they look at the amount of advertising and targeting right. To, to poor and African American, Hispanic communities, it's staggering. And, and there was not one overweight person in this sea of African Americans in 1970. Yeah. And so it's literally just happened. And I'm, I was 11 years old in 1970. Yeah. And in my lifetime, you know, you see this change. So we have this staggering problem of, of chronic illness, which people suffer from this bankrupting people, that's bankrupting our country. I mean, think about the amount of economic stress. We talk about- Well, insurance you know, too. I mean so much insurance money that's involved in this too. People are having to go to the doctor so much more probably now because of these issues, right? Absolutely, people, and then many people are not adequately covered. So there's a lot of co-pays. I mean, you know, people can have 10, $20,000 in co-pays. I had a patient the other day who, you know, had diabetes and I, I fixed his diabetes through food and he says, I saved $10,000 a year wow. on co-pays for my insulin <laughs> and my, like. Just the drugs. Yeah. yeah, and when you look at the amount on diabetes spent in this country, which is basically one out of every two Americans has pre-diabetes or type two diabetes, one third of Medicare spending is on diabetes. One you third know. of Medicare is on and, diabetes. Yeah. Medicare, if it was a company, it would be the biggest company in the world, a trillion dollar budget a year. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Yes, one third of our total federal tax revenue expected to grow to 100% of our mandatory spending by 2048. And in six years, Lewis, six years, the Medicare trust fund, which is sort of the bank account that we use to make sure uh -huh. we cover Medicare, it's a little complicated how it works, but the Medicare trust fund is gonna be out of money. So that means that we're gonna to have to get a trillion dollars a year out of uh, our tax revenue. We're not covering it. Oh so my this, gosh. Is a, this is a threat to our economy. It's a threat to our political stability. It's a threat even to national security, Lewis, because seven out of 10 kids who apply for the military get can't rejected. Get, can't get in? Because they're too fat or unfit no to fight. Way. Yes, it's a, it's a, there's a 700 admirals and generals that published a report called Unhealthy and Unprepared about the threat in our military 
and national security. And not only that, soldiers are overweight. So we're feeding them crap. They go in Iraq and Afghanistan, the number one reason for, for uh, medical evacuations was not war injury, was obesity-related no, problems. come on. Yes, 100%. Obesity-related problems? What does that mean? Like they're injury, like a heart uh, injury, problem? Or? Injuries from being overweight. Wow. You know? and, and you can read about this. I didn't make this shit up. I right. mean, <laughs> I mean, this is in, in that wow. report, Unhealthy and Unprepared. Just Google it, you can read it yourself. Wow. It's staggering. So we have, we have uh, you know, a $22 trillion debt uh, we have, um, you know, this threat of chronic disease exploding. It's getting worse and worse. Uh, Medicare for all is kind of a silly idea, and so is repealing Obamacare. Now they're going to help the problem unless we figure out how to stop people from going into the system in the first place. Into the system, meaning, of meaning getting unhealthy. Yeah, if they don't need medical care, it's cheap, right. you know. So let's go back to diabetes for a second. Tell me again the stat on diabetes: how many people have yeah. it or are okay. pre-diabetic, and yes. and what. I'm uneducated on this, so how many different types of diabetes are there okay, and good. how is it caused? Okay, okay. So type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. Pancreas fails, it's called, we should be called juvenile diabetes, uh, and you need insulin. It's just... It's, you need it. It's a, you need insulin. If you have but type you, 1 diabetes, you need insulin. You need insulin, yeah, because your what? pancreas dies, because your pancreas makes insulin and helps your blood sugar uh, get balanced, keeps, that's the blood, it's sort of the gatekeeper that lets the, the glucose into your cells, okay. so it's really important. Um, so how does that die? What, how how what do people has, die from that? I mean, how does the pancreas die? Oh, well, it's an how does it get to that disease. point? It's an auto, like an auto, like you get multiple sclerosis or gotcha. arthritis. It's, it's basically your body attacks your pancreas. Is that and, from and, eating a lot of bad foods? Uh, well, there's been links to dairy and actually as an, a driver of type 1 uh, diabetes. Gluten, 29% of people who have type 1 diabetes have celiac that are undiagnosed. So wow. a celiac is a big cause of autoimmune diseases, okay. including type 1 diabetes. So that's a very small number of people, okay. very few. Um, one out of two Americans have what we call type 2 diabetes. We used to call it adult onset, except now kids as young as three are getting type 2 diabetes from drinking soda from the crib. I mean, oh Lewis, my gosh. I, I, was, I was working in, when I was a resident in an urgent care center, and this woman comes in for back pain, and she's got her baby in a carriage, and I see her feeding this baby this brown liquid in a bottle who's seven months old. And I'm like, what is soda? that? Soda? I'm like, what is that? She's like, that's Coca Cola. No. I said, why are you feeding your baby Coke? She says, well, uh, he likes it. Oh my gosh. Oh my God, Lewis, I, my, my wife showed me this, this uh, video on on, uh, on social media the other day. It was of a baby, it looked like it was maybe eight or nine months old baby, having ice cream for the first time. Oh. Having sugar for the first time. And you watch the baby eat the ice cream. I light up. The eyes, <laughs> and then the baby like I want grabs more. the thing and like stuffs in his face. I was like, oh my God, it was just so crazy. And it's it's highly addictive. So. Uh, yeah, so, so now we're seeing one in two Americans suffer from either pre-diabetes or type 2 or type two diabetes. And, and that is when you eat wow. too much sugar and starch, and every time you do that, it raises your insulin. Your body becomes resistant to the insulin, and so it doesn't work as well, so you need more insulin. Mm -hmm. And insulin does what? Insulin makes you hungry, it makes you store belly fat, it locks the fat in the fat cells, and it slows your metabolism. It's like a quadruple bad. threat for your body to gain weight. So. It's why we're seeing, you know, and that goes back to what we're growing, right? So why are we eating all this food? That it's because that's the food we produce, mm -hmm. right? And, and so that's the other part of the problem. So we have the chronic disease, we have the economic impact, and then we're like, well, why do we have this food? So as a functional medicine doctor, I'm always asking why, right? Well, why are my patients sick? Because it makes money, right? Well, no, I'm, yeah, but, but I'm going right, even right, further. Right. Why, like, why I got interested sick? in this? Because as a, why, why would a doctor care about agriculture and soil and all this crap? Because I, as I was thinking about my patients' diseases, most of them were caused by food and can be cured by food. Mm. So I'm thinking, well, well if it's how many, are, by, how many are most of them? Is this like 50%, 70%? 80%. 80% of anyone either, that comes in to the hospital, yeah. or your patients, yeah. Who has some type of disease or yeah. some type of sickness? I mean, unless it's like an environmental thing, like mercury or lime or mold. You know, most of the or things. Or cancer. Cancer. Right. Cancer is caused by food. Really? Seventy percent. Seventy percent of cancer is caused by food. And sugar is the number one culprit. Heart can, disease, can, diabetes, can, Alzheimer's, heart disease—the big killers are now, by sugar and food. Yes. Yeah. So if you change your diet, you should be able to cure, prevent, those. prevent or cure sometimes. Sometimes cure depends how far yeah. along things are. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. But you can prevent heart disease, Alzheimer's. 100%. Yes, one hundred percent. I mean, the studies are there. It's crazy. Even people already have Alzheimer's when they improve their diet, they can wake they get up more and get functionality yeah. back. 
So, so you've got me thinking, okay, well, if the patient's disease are caused by food, what's causing the food? It's the food system. And I'm like, well, what's causing the food system? It's our food policies. Mm. Like, what's causing our food policies? It's the food industry that's lobbying Congress. It's got money. It's the biggest lobby group in Congress is agriculture and food, food. by far, like by twice as much as the next uh, lobby group. By like gas and oil or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. And it's like, what? So then I began thinking, well, if I'm gonna help my patients, I can't do it in my office. I, I can, it's like, it's like I'm, I'm like in the boat, bailing the boat with a hole instead of plugging the hole. Right. You're not so, going to the source. Right. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, what do I need to do as a functional medicine doctor? I need to go to the root cause, right? The root cause and why. And then it became clear to me that it's, it's our, our agricultural system that's driving so much of the problem. It's like, I'm the first one to raise my hand when I say like, I love sugar and it's my, Everybody my biggest vice, right? Everybody like I does. love cookies and candies and cakes and brownies and anything you can think of, I love it, right? You know, we programmed I don't know sugar. why I don't have diabetes. So much sugar I've had in my whole life. But you I- You can't be having that much because you look pretty good. <laughs> well, I train hard too, right? I go through waves. And, but as a kid, I would drink like nine, 10, Dr. Pepper's a day, I remember. What? Like some days in the summer, you're just sitting around. You could have been president, it's not what I president. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I would just, I mean, I would run around and, and work out and play sports, but then yeah. I would just drink, because yeah. I thought that's like what was on eight, TV. You were 16, 18, you're like. And I was like nine, 10, right? So oh. I was like, but it was, you'd see it on commercials, like your NBA superstar yeah. drinking yeah. Dr. Pepper or Sprite yeah. or whatever after, on the basketball court. And I don't know if it was just like subconscious or just it tasted good and you didn't think about it. it well, was just, they, all about, I mean, this is where the food industry is so, I mean, I talk about it in my book, Food Facts, but the yeah. food industry is so strategic about how it advances its mission and goals. And it does it through multiple channels. And I, I'm just gonna go through them because it just, people just don't know. The celebrity first, endorsements, right? Yeah, the first, you know, obviously, you know, celebrity endorsements, which is the obvious one. They co-op social groups. So they, they fund mm -hmm. groups like the NAACP and Hispanic Federation, the you know, African-American and Latino communities are the most affected by diabetes mm -hmm. and obesity. And they co-opt them by funding them. I, I want to show the movie Fed Up at yeah. the King Center in Atlanta. And Bernice King, Martin King's daughter, was all about it and she was excited. But once, uh, once we got it scheduled a few days later, I got a call that we couldn't show it. I'm like, why? She's because Coca-Cola funds the King Center. No. Yeah. I went to Spelman College, you know, which is African American Women College in Atlanta, and the dean said to me, half of the 18-year-olds coming into college have a chronic illness: mm. obesity, hypertension, diabetes. 18-year-old women, and I'm like, why is there soda machines all over the campus? Why? It's just because Coke funds. No. And it one of the in. Wow. one of the people on the board of trustees is one of the highest executives at Coca-Cola. At Coca -Cola. Oh man, an African American woman. It's like so they co-op social groups. And that's why they, for example, oppose soda taxes because they're they're in the you know in the funding of these these big soda companies. And then, of course, they they fund research. So they fund twelve times as much research, twelve billion dollars worth of research a year to study nutrition. What would be the first steps that someone could take to help? Well, I think you know it, it seems book, like such a big. It is. It is. It's a, a little big. Little so, so let's talk about some of the solutions. So we know you know food is causing chronic disease. It's destroying our economy. It's Crippling climate our climate, change, yeah. it's, it's destroying our environment and killing all the pollinators and all biodiversity and it's causing social injustice because it targets poor minorities who suffer from problems. It, it prevents kids from learning in school because mm -hmm. they're eating all this crap. It threatens our national security, it creates political instability. So we know all these things. But the good news is that by fixing the food system, we can solve these. And how do we do it? Well, it's going to need citizen action, it's going to need business innovation, and it's going to need policy change. And of course, yeah. other philanthropists and governments to help get on board. And I think that's what's really exciting to me because there's so much hope. So, so for example, on a personal level, you can shift what you eat and what you do to drive change in the marketplace. Why are companies like Nestle and Unilever and Danone creating regenerative ag programs within their supply chain? Why are they trying to up, up mm. uh, the quality of their food and take out chemicals because right. consumers are demanding it. Well, they're Why buying they're buying companies like Primal Kitchen yeah. that have like like Kraft, right? Bought Primal Kitchen, which is basically a you know Whole Foods you know uh, really high quality nutritious product with no junk in it. I'm curious. You said something about nut milk. 
Uh, and about dairy. Yeah. Dairy, has dairy been declining? Yeah, dairy. In the last five yes, years? Yes, dairy consumption you know the, has been declining dramatically. Do you know the percentages uh, or the... It's like, yeah, I think, you know, over the last few years, like it's gone down about 25%. Borden, uh, which is a big milk producer, has been around since 18, I think 87, has gone bankrupt. What? Yeah. The, the lot of, and the, the, a lot of these bills, milk producers, now people are still eating cheese, they're eating yeah. yogurt, they're eating, but, but actual milk, uh, consumption has gone down and the is nut that, milks have gone up. Why is that? Is that I because think, of education? Is that because I of disease? I think, you know, that? I think probably a lot of reasons. I mean, <clears throat> 75% of the population is lactose intolerant. Yeah. So they don't feel good. Uh, I, I used mean, to drink so much milk every day. And, and how did you feel? Fine? I always had like a stuffy nose. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like I was always tired in workouts and practices. Yeah, like yeah. I was always blowing my nose. Yeah. Well, uh, it's actually, it, milk is nature's perfect food but only if you're a cat. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, we're the only species that consumes milk after weaning. Yeah. Uh, there are very few populations that seem to thrive on milk, the Maasai and some of the Northern Europeans. The other problem with the dairy we're eating today is not the dairy we ate, right? So there are heirloom cows. I mean, you travel around the world, you travel, I travel, mm -hmm. and you go see these really weird looking cows in other countries. I'm like, what is that? And it's a cow. <laughs> right. Know? But these are, uh, you know, complex breeds that have different types of protein in the milk, mm. different types of casein. And the, the Holstein, the sort of the homogenized cow, I don't mean homogenized milk, but they're, everything, they're all the same. Not the And they're fertilized by like the yeah. three bulls, I think. They get the, you know, right. like the sperm from three bulls. And it's like, they're all the same. And they have bred out the beneficial mm. or the safe casein, which is A2 casein, and then A1 casein, which causes more inflammation, more congestion, more irritable bowel, more autoimmunity, more skin issues. So wow. uh, people are getting that milk isn't always the best. And, and I think then, you know, people are eating nut milks. Now, they're not completely... Are those, are those good for you, though? Because a lot of people have still, like... Yeah. skin problems. Yeah, and... well, nut milks are problematic. So, uh, one, almond milk is great, but you know, almonds are... But you can't have too much of it. Yeah, I started to get like a rash after, yeah. like I switched from milk yeah. years ago, and I started to get like eczema, like a little eczema yeah, here yeah, and there. Yeah, yeah, And then when I stopped drinking it, it would go away, and yeah. I was like, huh, maybe I'm drinking well, so much almond, almond butter, almond milk, Well, a lot everything. of them had carrageenan in it, which uh, is causes leaky gut. Mm. You get leaky gut, you get eczema. So it's a thickener uh. they put in into these milks. They put a lot of sugar in these milks. They put right. a lot of gums in these milks. So you have to be very careful about which one you're having. And Just because it's healthier doesn't mean it's it healthier. Healthy. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't want to like, again, drinking tons of soy milk. It could be GMO soy, it could be right. full glyphosate. If not, it could be, you know, you know, getting huge amounts of these phytoestrogens, which where bodies aren't really meant to get. Eating traditional foods and traditional amounts are fine. Tofu, miso, tempeh, those are fine. Really? Those are how people have consumed soy over millennia, mm -hmm. but not 10 pounds a day and not three not glasses. Not gallons of No, I, I had a stepdaughter once. She loved soy milk, just drinking it all day. And she started like at like nine years old getting little breasts. And I'm like, well, that's not good. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, we have to be smart about it. And I think, you know, if you're using a little here and there, but I, I don't recommend people drink it as a drink. Really? You know, if you want to put a little coffee. Almond milk or soy milk. There's or macadamia not milk, coconut milk. Don't drink oat it. Milk. No, I mean, I think have, have it sometimes. You, you have a glass it. once a week, yeah. maybe it's okay, but not like drinking glasses every day. Yeah, or... probably not. Good idea. But you can add it to things. Sure, I, you know, put it in a smoothie, you know, you, and you mix them up. You know, there's mac, macadamia milk, there's, uh -huh. uh, you know, cashew milk, there's, you know, hazelnut milk, there's all kinds of milks now. So, mac, uh, I like, you know, I like macadamia milk. Macadamia milk is so good. It's like yeah. sweet taste. Yeah, it's you like, can make your own nut milks. I have cookbooks, my food, what the heck should I cook? Yeah. And others teach you how to actually make your own nut milks at home. You soak the nuts, you put them in a blender with some water, there's no additives, ingredients, sugar. Uh -huh. It's great. But not too much of it is what you're saying. Yeah, not, not yeah. That's the challenge. It's like anything, like anything. Except People for water, carried. drink a lot of water. That's yeah, I mean, it. listen, anything, it can kill you, right? Water can kill you. Uh, you know, marathon runners who overhydrate, mm -hmm. uh, their body uh, is diluted, their blood is diluted with too much water, and they get what we call low sodium or hyponatremia, and that causes seizures and death. So yeah, you can die from drinking too much water. So it's all about like eating stuff in, complex amounts mm -hmm. and in a complex variety of foods. So a variety of food is, yeah. is good. Huge, we used to eat 800 species of plants. That's good, not having the same like three no. things every well, day. Well, hey, listen, most of our diet is, is corn, soy, yeah. and corn, soy, and wheat. Most yeah. of our diet, you know, and, and in other countries, rice in there. And, and those are, you know, all mostly turned into processed food. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we used to have, you know, 
like I said, 800 species of plants we ate. Now there's 12. Mm. We've lost 90% of all our edible plant species, half of all our livestock species. So We've lost them. Gone. Extinct. What do you mean? Those, those plants are gone? Gone. I mean, there are... We can't make... We can't create... There's no there seeds are seed, anymore? There are seed banks that, um, that are... are there are seed vaults oh, those in are Alaska. They're valuable. Like, yeah, the USDA has you know, a lot of seeds. Actually, a friend of mine um, was trying to develop different you know, varieties of plants and was trying to get some old seeds and got to the USDA. And by accident, he got a packet, which was numbered like 43216, whatever. And he was like, called him and said, what is this? Because like, he was working with an agricultural guy to grow you know, healthy food. And he goes, these are these Himalayan buckwheat. Himalayan buckwheat which is kind of a rare buckwheat from Him the Himalayas. Mm. It grows in really rough conditions. And it's one of the most nutrient, phytochemically rich, dense foods, high protein, low starch, full of phytochemicals, vitamins and minerals mm. on the planet. <laughs> and it's and almost extinct. Pretty much. Maybe there's a few villages in Himalayas that wow. grow it. So, you know, how do we bring that back? And how do we start to create different sort of more, you know, beneficial grains? There's, there's um, uh, Kernza wheat, which has been developed by uh, uh, West Jackson out in uh, West Jackson out in, in, in the Midwest, which is a perennial wheat that grows roots that go you know you know tens of feet into the ground, breaks up the soil, creates organic matter, and creates incredibly delicious wheat. That's heirloom wheat, or not, it's, it's actually a new form, but it's it's actually uh, doesn't have all the gluten in it. It's more less inflammatory, mm. less sugar. Oh man! Uh, so we need to kind of bring back some of these different kinds of foods in these complex farms that, that actually restore soil, restore yeah. human health. I'm in. So, you know I, I, you know, I spent 30 years doing functional medicine and just seeing the power of food to actually heal people. And, uh, you know, people don't often don't understand how close they are to feeling good or how bad they feel. Like it could somebody, be like one or two days switch. Yeah, like I mean, what you eat. Dr. Hyman, I didn't know how bad it was feeling until I started feeling good. And I was, <laughs> I was joking, I said, you have FLC syndrome, which is when you feel like crap. Right, and well, it's just like the inflammation, the pain, the yeah. achiness, the tired. Like you said, you had congestion nose, yeah. your digestion's not right, you have a little headache, tired you're sluggish, all the time. you have yeah. brain fog, you're tired, you're achy, you don't sleep well, you have skin problems. Blurry you know? eyes. Like yeah, all stuff. that stuff, and people are like, oh, this is normal. This is just normal, yeah. I, normal I have an irritable bowel. I have sinus issues. I'm like, my joints are a little sore. No, it's your food. It's what you're eating. And so for 10, 10 days, you do a 10 day reset. It literally like, it's like when your computer's not working, you hit mm -hmm. the reset and it reboots everything. It's like a reboot. And then you get to see within 10 days how powerfully food and impacts reset, you. Im yes. And then you go, well, oh, now I can choose. Now I can feel like crap or I can feel great. But now I know. Yeah. And there's a the more serious form of what we call feel like crap, which is FLC syndrome called FLS. <laughs> Right, <laughs> exactly. And, and then you that's know, when we, you we go to the have, doctor. We have, yeah. we have uh, and the first time I ever created anything because I really want people to have the experience. It's called um, it's a company called Pharmacy, and you go to getpharmacy.com with an F, F A R M A C Y, and you can get the 10 day reset. It's a whole uh, program that's it's really integrated and it's powerful and it involves lifestyle change and diet change and the right nutrients and supplements and shakes and it's just awesome. Wow, 10 days. 10 days. Reset it. I mean, I I even do it. You know, like I. You know, I, I came back from the holidays, you know, and I, I try to do well. I cook Christmas dinner. I'm, I'm Jewish. Yeah. My wife's family, and I made it all healthy. But, you know, when it was her mom's house, we were here. It's like, oh, a little ice cream, all this. Yeah. Like, and I didn't go too far. But, you know, I didn't feel great. And I came back, and I just did the whole 10-day reset. And it's like, I feel amazing. I mean, you don't crave bad stuff. Your energy's up. Yeah. Your sleep's better. Your joints don't hurt. Your digestion's good. I got to get know? it. Yeah. I got to get it for me and the team. Make yeah. sure we reset it. Amazing. So, um, getpharmacy.com. Yes. Uh, food fix book food fix book.com and your podcast doctor's pharmacy doctor's pharmacy yeah we need everybody on the team here to fix this food system because it's an yeah. existential threat if we don't do it we're screwed I mean we're just you know we know the decline of the Roman Empire was mm -hmm. because of some bad stuff that was going on there well our food is the decline of our empire really yeah absolutely well for all sick and dead we can't yeah. do anything I mean yeah I mean we, the amount of the amount of, of disability and suffering a lot of pain mental illness Mental illness connected to food. Depression. Depression, obesity, chronic disease. It so limits much. our productivity, our ability to engage in life. Like, we all want to feel good. We want to have mm -hmm. energy. We want to be able to love the people we love in our life, to do the work we want, to have the mission we want, to, to be energetic and engaged. And I just want to sit around all day and binge on Netflix, right? Yeah. I mean, watching Netflix is fine, but like, not in a way that avoids life because you feel yeah. so bad. Yeah. And I think uh, what's frustrating for me is, Lewis, is that I see so much needless suffering. 
Yeah. You know, some things we can't change. You know, we can't change, you know, natural disasters. You know, I can't, I can't end war. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a solvable problem. Yeah, solvable. And yeah, it's totally fixable. Love it. We look at the root causes of disease, and there are many, right? There's environment, there's lifestyle, there's genetics, all affect these Stress, systems yeah. in your body, right? But by far, the biggest cause is food. Really? By far. Uh, and, and it affects, I mean, we, what's amazing is it's not, it's not just like a little 